in today's episode of Art of Making. How to make a masterpiece from a decorative squash. What is Chakan and what it means to Tajik people? What you see now is made of decorative squash, but this is difficult to determine at first glance. Only if we look at it closer, we can see that this is a real vegetable. Aysa Bidenov will tell us how he makes interesting things from squash. Kavaktan jasa uşun, şini tazala bu gerek. Aslında kesip, bulay tez. First, the squash must be peeled. Mene. Tezip. Also, we remove the insides and seeds. Özümün jasağın. Then, with the help of a hacksaw, we cut off the excess parts. Uçnoy. That's how I start my work. Mene. Sonu bastayım ben bulay. Aysa Bidyanov has been engaged in this craft for more than 15 years. After graduating from the Tashkent Art College, he worked for many years as an artist. In 1994, Aysa came to Kazakhstan, but after unsuccessful tries to find a job based on his specialty, he got a job as a janitor at the Academy of Sciences. His talent did not go unnoticed, and so I said began working in an art shop. There, our hero worked until his retirement. And when he had free time, he began to create nice products from decorative squash. First, you need to grow squashes. They grow large and hang like grapes. This vegetable is also called a zucchini. First, I clean the inside, then I dry it. Then I process the outside part and paint it. Then I draw a sketch of my ideas with a pencil. Here I have some works. Friendship of Peoples by Tirek, they were presented at many exhibitions and for them I received awards. And it gives me a great joy. Decorative squash has a shape of a ladle. It's practically not used for food. But it's ideal for creativity and creating various dishes and other household utensils. It is believed that the homeland of the squash is Africa. It grows in the wild. Once Uyghur artisans began to make homeware from it. Buckets, tea bowls, vessels for liquids and ripe fruits were used as a medicine. People prepared decoctions from it. This way, liver and kidney diseases were treated. We Uyghurs still use this vegetable. 
If you visit any Uyghur house, you will surely see something made from a decorative squash. For example, a tea bowl, which makes tea really tasty. It's not easy to make anything from a squash. It requires quite a lot of effort. But the fantasy of the craftsman does wonders and allows to create true masterpieces. Sometimes it takes a month to make something. Of course, first I thought out my ideas in my head and my thoughts. To do something high quality and useful, you need to think about it carefully. Then I start making a form. For example, if I want to make a bird, then I imagine what kind of wings it will have, what it will look like, and then pick up the shape and start working on it. Now Isaibidenov is working on a job which will have images of famous scientists and thinkers of the Turkic peoples. Mano kavakka bütün dünya Türk halklarının galimlerinin on this jack, I want to depict not only portraits of famous thinkers of the Turkic people, but also to write their wise sayings and thoughts. This is still unfinished work. I'm still working on a sketch and its shape. And this is the book on which these wise words will be written. And it will be placed inside the jug. Through the holes that I will cut out in the squash, you can read this text. I think it will be quite an interesting thing. As conceived by the craftsman, the jug will be decorated with portraits of the poet and philosopher Abai, scientists Al-Farabi, Navoi, and other famous thinkers of the East. This will be one of the significant works for me, says the artist. As far as I can, I take part in various exhibitions. I try to popularize this art among young people. And I do everything to revive and continue this art, which we inherited from our ancestors. Now Isabidenov teaches this craft to one of his grandchildren. He teaches his grandson to create beauty from an ordinary squash. The craftsman admits that he wants to make an effort to preserve and pass this Asian art on to his descendants. To find out how history intervenes with modern life in fabrics, our film crew went to the famous Tajik designer Hurshed Satorov, who is engaged in ancient embroidery called Chakan. The designer even presented a collection of clothes decorated with Chakan at the annual session in UNESCO, which was held 
on the island of Mauritius. The jury appreciated the bright ornament and unusual style of handmade embroidery. Chacon is primarily a tribute to ancestors, but at the same time the designer manages to weave ancient patterns into fashionable modern dresses and wedding outfits. Во-первых, то, что было до меня, это уже Thousands of years, our Tajik masters created these ornaments. They were inspired by nature. For example, if it's a circle, it meant the earth. The sun is always yellow. And I, of course, used those ornaments that were used before us, those ornaments that have survived to this day. I tried to convey what has been preserved and introduce something new. I mix these patterns. This is a new artistic look. Since the Chacon today changes its style, character and even its cut, the outfits become different, and you have to make new developments. For example, these pomegranates are used in our national costumes or in an interior. They decorate curtains and blankets. Today I often use them in chapons, in dresses, because pomegranate is a symbol of family and fertility. Basically, the chacon is embroidered on a red background, because red is a sign of fire. Why do brides wear it for a wedding? In order to drive away evil spirits. Red is used in all chacon outfits. Yellow is the sign of the sun. Green represents trees and nature. Blue is the color of purity. And white and black? is like day and night, that is the dark and light sides. Pouchet Zatorov personally draws sketches, he complements the Asian patterns with his own, while not changing the canons of the existing ornament. It's not surprising that the designer perfectly knows the meaning of the chacon, harmoniously combines the color scheme of the canvas. For a long time, Horchette studied the work of eminent craftswomen and now successfully presents the Asian Tajik embroidery to international fashion. Our main goal is to show the whole world that the Tajik people have a very ancient, rich, bright and beautiful culture in costume. So I create such costumes that we demonstrate every year at the High Fashion Week in different countries. We have already visited all cities of Central Asia, as well as Russia, Azerbaijan, China, Qatar, the Arab Emirates. I traveled a lot and showed our national costumes. Every time we demonstrate a hand-embroidered costume, people are just delighted with such a beautiful combination of bright colors. We live in a sunny country and we bring a festive atmosphere. And it's this atmosphere in the High Fashion Week that makes it possible to show people, other designers, a very beautiful and rich culture of the Tajik people. And costumes have strong energy, since they are made by hand, master puts his soul in it, and that's philosophy. People look at them with admiration, they buy it and are happy to wear chacon. Embroidery chacon was mainly used in the mountainous regions of Tajikistan. Today the ornament is used in all regions of the country, but each region has its own characteristics. In Pamirs, in the east of the country, it is embroidered on white cloth. In the north, a combination of two colors is used, 
for example yellow fabric and a black pattern. In the West, they prefer a green background, but in the South, they choose a red base and bright threads. By the way, it is the South, or rather the city of Kulob, that is considered the homeland of Chakan. You can determine in which region the dress was sewn according to the ornament. In the southern part of the Republic, plant ornament is more used. In the mountains, Badakhshan region, geometric patterns and white red colors are used. In the northern part of the country, more pastel tones are used. In general, the Chakan has an ancient history and is very important for Tajiks. It's encouraging that the world community has recognized Chakan as the cultural heritage of the Tajik people. After all, Chakan is used not only in clothes, but also in the interior and accessories, headdresses and handbags. An interesting fact, no one knows exactly when the Chakan appeared. But historians refer to the period of Zoroastrianism connecting it with the cult of the sun, since it's based on a circle. Here, each pattern has its own meaning. For example, if you look at the Suzani, in addition to the large circle of the sun, we see stars. It's a symbol of the sky, a symbol of prosperity. And this line is called Ova. It collects all the other patterns in one piece. And these are not only beautiful patterns embroidered with satin stitch. These are wishes. Many legends are associated with ancient Chakan embroidery. Previously, sweets were put into the white, embroidered sleeves and given to children, wishing prosperity to the house and owners. And in the South, when the girl was born, her mother, grandmother or great-grandmother specially embroidered the sleeve from the future dress and kept it in a chest box. It was believed that becoming a young woman, she would sew a dress and live a happy life. It was very hot in the South, therefore dresses were made of gauss, and the sleeves were made of gauss too. So that sweat is absorbed into this fabric, and the outfit remained tender and beautiful. Residents of Kolob have one tradition. The bride doesn't go to the groom's house without an embroidered Suzan. When I went with my aunt to order myself a veil, I first saw how the artist works. I liked it and I decided to learn how to draw. Craftswomen who are engaged in embroidery of Chakan say that it's important to understand the meaning of the ornament. Patterns must be in harmony with each other. Work is time-consuming and requires perseverance and patience. A couple of voluminous patterns on a dress will take three to four days, but on a panel, even two weeks may not be enough. Chakan is a beautiful thing. On the Tajik girl, it looks very beautiful because the threads of the Chakan are made of pure cotton, which is useful for human health. Tajik fashion designers successfully weave Chakan into modern dresses and costumes. It's believed that if the outfit is made with a soul and power is invested in the ornament, then it will be like a talisman. And this is not a fashion trend, but a tradition. In each collection you see here, I combine Sogdian, Hatlon, Kulop and Pamir patterns. Dushanbe tulips will be here, because Dushanbe is famous for these flowers. Today, Chakan is found everywhere – on skull caps, handbags, paintings and blankets.
modern women either sew chacon on fashionable things or buy ready-made products. Каждый год я выбирала себе платье. В этом году решила выбрать из. I really like these patterns, these colors. All of them are so beautiful. Не знаю, мне нравится. The sleeves are nice looking too. I think this dress will suit me. I want to buy it. <laughs> Old embroidery chacon decorates wedding dresses. The national color is in trend today. Brides have a lot of demands nowadays. At first they entered the groom's house in a white dress, but now there are many who want to buy chacon. They accessorize their dresses with our national silver jewelry. To keep the chacon embroidery alive, famous craftsmen and fashion designers share the secrets of skill with young people. Kurshat Satoro, for example, in his studio opened a workshop where he teaches the intricacies of pattern drawing. I like that Hushet can make you feel admired. He gives women wings, so to speak. He uplifts women in this way. He himself is an inspired person and inspires all the people who work with him. Experts are sure that Asian art will always be popular. Outfits with Chakan embroidery and also blankets, trimmed with intricate but at the same time harmonious patterns, are regularly presented at exhibitions and fairs of artisans. Some say, what is a tradition? Traditions are when the future feeds on the past. If we do not know about our culture, about our traditions and customs, how can we create something new? Chacon itself does not require special technological equipment, but depends on the quality of the fabric, threads and the fantasy of the craftsmen. Each ornament has certain meanings for dresses, for the interior, for headdresses. At all times and around the world, manual work is more appreciated than automated. To revive and develop the art of Chakan embroidery in Tajikistan, the contest 100 Shades of Chakan has begun. The competition takes place in six categories – old clothes of Chacon, children's clothes, casual clothes, clothes for celebrations and holidays, official clothes, various types of hand embroidery of Chacon. Craftswomen from all regions of the country took part in it. They presented their creative works and the government adopted a decree on the year of development of folk crafts. It will give a powerful impetus to the development of traditional crafts. A new holiday appeared in the calendar of Tajikistan, Chakan Day. This way, the nation emphasizes the importance of the national embroidery for their culture. And in 2018, the Chakan was added to the UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage List. This means that the Chakan is now under the protection of not only Tajikistan, but also of the entire world community.